Everything is going wrong. Perhaps you lost loved ones and some way too early. Or your business failed. Maybe your job is gone, which means your house is gone. Life is spiraling out of control. The man of this story can relate. And it's not Job. History with Larry. All right, guys. Well, like we said, this is a new segment that we have. And this is the, it's either going to be news or history, right? Right. And this is, it's so serious that Larry had to put his glasses on. I did. So, yeah. <laughs> this one is kind of history. What do we got today? It's, it's kind of history, but it's about a person. Oh, okay. So, all right, here we go. Is it? No. It's <laughs> you're, you're spoiling it. I'm oh. sorry. Oh, I don't, I don't know who this is. I know. So you got to wait till the end. Oh, you got to get a story. Oh, All up. right. So here's a brief story of a man who kept his faith in the face of pain and misery. Ooh. Life is oftentimes hard and at other times downright cruel. Have you ever n- gone through a period in your life where you felt like a rain cloud over your head? Everything is going wrong. Perhaps you lost loved ones and some way too early. Or your business failed, maybe your job is gone, which means your house is gone. Life is spiraling out of control. The man of this story can relate, and it's not Job. Mm. So here we go. Our tale takes place many years ago. Horatio was a man of means, a realtor, investor, and a lawyer. We won't hold that against him. (laughs) (laughs) He was a devout Christian and a friend of D.L. Moody. Life was good, and he was blessed in business, marriage, and family. He had five children. Four girls and one boy. Marriage. Marriage, that's right. As is often the case, life is so unpredictable. The good times were coming to an end. At four years old, Scarlet Fever took the life of his son. One year later, tragedy came around again, this time in the form of fire. A massive fire swept through Chicago in 1871, claimed more than 300 lives and many properties, and a lot of people were homeless. Including Horatio. I didn't do that. I know. (laughs) In spite of his great loss, he demonstrated the love of Christ by helping those in need. Two years passed, and it was time for a much-needed vacation and a ministry opportunity Mm -hmm. in Europe with D.L. Moody. Horatio sent his wife and daughters ahead while he finished some unfinished business. Oh. Yeah. But tragedy came knocking again. The ship his family was on was hit by an iron sailing ship, and 226 people died, four of which were his daughters. Yikes. Yeah. A few years later, he was blessed with three more children, two girls and a boy. But grief and tragedy seemed to follow this poor soul wherever he went. Once again, at age four, his son died. Mm. Yeah. The family left America in 1881 for Jerusalem, where they preached the gospel, cared for the sick, and took in homeless children. You may not know his name, but you will know his work. When tragedy came around, he was able to say, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. That is the story of Horatio Spafford. Well, let me get his name right. Horatio, Horatio, Horatio Gates Spafford. Gates. Horatio Gates Sp- Yeah. So he's the author of he's, It Is Well. Yeah. It Is Well. And yeah, a lot of people don't. They, I knew the story that, of the shipwreck. Yeah. Right. But Most I didn't realize the story before how that his son died and that he lost a lot of his business holding, his properties. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that he actually uh, knew D.L. Moody and worked with them in ministry. Yeah, and then uh, they left America and went to Jerusalem and uh, worked at a ministry there. Yeah. And then uh, his son, I mean, before that, his son, his other son died again at four years old. What that's it, pretty I mean, cool. Well, that's not pretty cool, but it's pretty yeah. cool that, uh, I, you know, connecting that story. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what Sarah wanted to do with her her segment is uh, just kind of bring light to some of those things, not the, not the history aspect of it, but... Yeah, I mean, we sing that song sometimes, yeah. and uh, someone pointed out, don't know who it was, but peace like a river. Yeah. Um, like a river, how peaceful is a river, you know? And, and sometimes it could be... Depends. Wait, yeah, when you it watch depends. it, it's kind of peaceful. You, sit you, there well, the you go to the yeah. river at my house, it's pretty peaceful. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Down here, but, we got a lot of peaceful rivers. Yeah. But I don't know, in not Colorado... When you, um, not yeah. when you're sitting on the Mississippi and a barge just went yeah. through. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not very peaceful. But no, it's, a, it's a, oftentimes we think of, as a Christian, that life is always going to be good and there's never going to be anything bad happen. Yeah. 
But and a lot of people, their faith is wrecked when tragedy like like that happens. And this poor guy, I mean, tragedy seemed to go with him yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So. No, I, I did uh, notice though that you wrote it out. Why didn't you type it out? Well, because I didn't have time. <laughs> oh, okay, but okay, okay. I was busy building the mic stands. No, I and get it. But it just uh, typing seems to be faster than writing. Well, I was. Well, I didn't. I actually wrote that in one night. Okay. I wasn't planning on doing the whole thing, and oh. but I just under inspiration. And you said just, you can't write. I know How about that. Yeah. So good story. That's like yeah. uh, Paul Harvey. It's the rest of the story. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, do you have any questions for him? No, I think I, I, that was good. Yeah. What about you, babe? You like that? I like that uh, a lot. Okay. That's really cool. All right. Well, thank you, Larry. 